just get comfortable. That's cool. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So we are outside today. I don't know if you can hear. We have dogs like whimpering in the background because they want to hang out with us. We have some cats that are probably going to come up. We have chickens and a duck that are just kind of roaming freely today. So we'll see how this goes. But we wanted to talk about our homestead. So we have never really shown everything uh, about our property or kind of what we have going on. And so we thought it would be a good time to do that and talk about like some future plans that we have, I guess. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we purchased this property. Um, a long time a ago. A long time ago. like <laughs> Before we got married, right after we got right married. Right after, so like 17 years ago probably. Yeah. I think we spent like $6,000 for two acres, mm -hmm. which at the time felt like a lot, but land prices now. That crazy deal does not yet. crazy deal really good deal. Um, so we live at the end of a housing edition. Uh, one of the reasons that we wanted to talk about this is because I think that sometimes people hear like homestead life or uh, like a farm type life, and they think that you have to have like a hundred acres or something. Um, and we want to just kind of show that that's not true, right? So and even though two acres is a lot for me, mm -hmm. at least from what I'm used to, um, it's still not that much in comparison to like what most people yeah. or a lot of people think that you need to have. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, we're going to make do with what we have. And uh, there's people that have a whole lot uh, smaller yards and you can make it happen too. Yeah, It's just sure. a matter of maximalizing. Maximalizing. <laughs> we're gonna just copyright that word because yeah. it's it's more than maximizing it is we are putting things on top of things on top of things and kind of learning um, what sort of things we can put together so that we are getting the absolute most out of the two acres yeah. that we do have right so let's um, let's start in the front I guess of yeah. our house so in the front we are changing some stuff up this year we built two raised bed gardens and right now they are full of stuff kind of breaking down and composting so that we are going to be able to just put a layer of like garden soil on top of that and we will use those two big planters we're gonna paint the outside and make it look pretty uh, but those two big planters are gonna be for our potatoes this year we're really, I'm really excited about that. Uh, we do not currently have any kind of like a basement or a cold room or anything that we are, we would like that you normally would be able to put them in. But we were super, super fortunate when we built our house to be able to get, what's that kind of insulation called? Oh, the spray foam. Spray foam insulation through our entire house. So it is completely covering inside of our attic as well. So I got a just cheap little thermometer. It measures the humidity and stuff off of Amazon. And one of the things that we've been doing for school is kind of tracking the temperatures throughout like hot times and cold times to kind of see how it fluctuates and the beautiful thing about it is is it's staying about 50 degrees consistently throughout the year uh, that probably won't be true for like the heat 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 of summer but we won't really need to be storing potatoes during that time anyway so we will be able to grow enough potatoes to last us until we run out of potatoes i guess um and store potatoes them. Potatoes are my favorite. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to be able to have a place to store those. So we're storing them in an attic rather than building some sort of a cold room or um, even like a cellar or anything like that right. right now. So maybe that'll be in our plans later. But for right now, we want to do what we can with what we actually have. Yeah. And it's a lot of trial and error. Yes. Right? Because we've tried different things in the front. Yeah that uh, kind of worked, kind of mm -hmm. didn't work. Um, so this is the first time we're trying it this way. Yeah. We've got a little bit more experience now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, you have more experience now. I'm still new. You're getting there. Um, and uh, so hopefully this will work. Yeah. And 
once all the fencing and everything's up there in the front, it'll look really nice too. Yeah, I think so too. So another thing that we're doing is we're adding fencing to the front. We're going to add some dirt. It is a mess mm -hmm. right now, um, an absolute mess. But we were able to grow some stuff in the front last year. Um, I wanted to see how that would work if taking like that space away would make a big difference as far as like what the kids are like have access to to play with or whatever and they did not care <laughs> at all you can play around it yeah um and so we are going to add some dirt and kind of amend that with some compost that we have going in the back uh and then we are going to we are going to build fences i am not building any fences <laughs> um you can see not in my condition yeah uh so the guys maybe the girls too just not me are going to build some fences in the front that are going to connect to our raised beds and then in there we are going to do a pepper garden on one side so lots of jalapenos poblanos serranos uh pepperoncinis Lots of stuff. I'm really very excited about growing all the peppers in the front. Uh, and then on the other side, we're going to do um, for sure some green beans. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what else. But our goal is to grow as much of the produce that we can eat as a family for a good amount of the year. Now, I don't know if this year we will get to like a full year supply of everything, but. I mean, we're, we're working toward that. Right. Yeah. So last year in our garden, we only had the garden in the back. Um, we still have that this year. Uh, and that is our tomato garden and our herb garden. Uh, so we go through a lot of homemade pasta sauce and pizza sauce. We usually have pasta pretty much every week and pizza most weeks. Uh, and so last year we were able to grow enough of our own that we are so it's february and we're still working through the stuff that we grew and made and canned yeah. ourselves and that has saved us a ton of money and i think that that really lit a fire under us to like invest more time oh i tasted lunch again <laughs> Anyway, uh, so that really lit a fire under us to, um, what did I say? Invest more time. Invest more time. So it really lit a fire under us to invest more time and energy and money into our garden stuff because we really saw like a big return on that in a way that I don't know that we have for anything else that we've yeah. done um, up until this point. So we have big plans for flowers this year. Um, we grew, if you saw the video that was just released maybe a couple weeks ago, uh, we did, I did like a walkthrough of our 2023 gardens and we did zinnias and they were so beautiful and I love them so much. And so we will be doing a lot of zinnias. Uh, I'm going to plant some more rose bushes. Pretty excited about getting some flowers going because I think that, um, the bees, the bees, <laughs> Our big deal. Save the bees. Save the bees. Uh, definitely a big deal. And so uh, we want to bring those in. But also, like, it just, there's just some, it just is pretty. Yeah. And it looked really nice. It did. And like being out in it, it just made me so happy. And uh, can you really quantify that? That feeling so it was definitely worth it and we grew those from seeds so it cost very little but the amount of enjoyment that we got out of it was immense and so we're gonna put some real effort into making sure that we do that again this year yeah so along those same lines um, we're gonna go to the back of our property now and let's talk about what we're putting back there okay so we're putting berries berries <laughs> So I don't know if you guys have caught this or not, but uh, one of us is more of the mastermind yeah, and the other one is more of the really supportive spouse. <laughs> you guys can pick out which yeah, one is what. Yeah, see if you can figure it out. Uh, but I mean, we, we are in sync and on the same page and... Um, took a minute. Took a minute. I prayed for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, are, we are both definitely seeing... Um, good 
for my for our whole family. So is that pasta sauce? So yeah, I did it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So in the back, we're gonna do berries. Uh, my plan is strawberries for sure because we already have plants. So of course that makes sense. Right now we have a bunch of cardboard set out, uh, and that's gonna kind of compost down and and help with the soil and we have never grown anything back there but when we bought this property it was used to run cattle on for decades and so the soil here is already very 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 good uh, so we were super lucky in that any dirt that we add in we do have to amend but we're on track doing that so that's good. Um, but being able to just dig right into the dirt that is here and know that it's going to have the nutrients already that we need it to have is extremely helpful. So we're going to do strawberries back there. Uh, I would like to do grapes back there. Um, we go through a lot of grape jam and a lot of grape juice. So if we can get on, um, growing those ourselves that would be great uh, and then probably some blackberries and maybe some blueberries back and forth on that one but that's our berry patch back there mm -hmm. um, and then back there right now we also have some other infrastructure you want to talk about that uh, do you mean that big gate that thing? Big gate the thing. pen the pen yeah so that was what we started off with the chickens mm -hmm. um, we had what, like 10, something like that, mm -hmm. 15, that we just kept in there. That was our first little barn, playground. Mm -hmm. what, are the, what are they called? A the chickens? run, a chicken a run. run. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's where we first started raising the chickens. Um, we still have it. We've used it for like when we had goats, we mm -hmm. threw them in there. They still got out. Um, rabbits. Rabbits were in there for a while. They still got out. Yes, the dogs. We put the dogs in there sometimes. They don't get out. They don't. Um, yeah, so we've used that thing for a bunch of stuff. I don't know what we're going to end up using it for now, mm -hmm. but we have it there. Um, so if you have any ideas of what we can use it for, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was our first. That was our first chicken thing. Uh, and next to it on the ground is our first chicken coop. Oh yeah. That I built while you were at work. Yeah. Uh, with the kids help and mm -hmm. that was that was like our first so that was six years ago and uh, That was our first like Experience with any kind of homesteading. We lived in the ta in town at that time. We had a very small yard We were not living in a home that we owned at that time and so there wasn't a ton that we could do but we could bring chickens in and I mean, I just fell so much in love with it, and um, the kids really enjoyed it. Getting our first eggs was so exciting, and uh, definitely, definitely, uh, like, connected me back to my roots, um, which is great. Yeah. Um, not you. He's from L.A., so you have no homesteady roots. Anyway. Well, you just spoiled who's the one that, you know, oh, that's is the true. expert. That's true. You gave it away. <laughs> Um, so we we don't really know what we're gonna do with that coop either. I don't right. know. I don't know what that's gonna look we like. Might We've... get bunnies again. Throw mm -hmm. them in there. Yeah, we'll see. One of the things that we wanted to to show also is that we are three years into living in this house, and it takes a long time to build up a really nice homestead. Um, it takes a long time to get good soil. It takes a long time to acquire all of the animals and get everything trained and all of the infrastructure and all of the things that go with any kind of animals, even with gardening sometimes. So we just wanted to show you guys too that it is, it is not what you might look at on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. You don't look at, you don't look at Pinterest, no. but, um, especially us ladies, I know that that can happen a lot. So we have some really, really beautiful areas that we love like this brick path that you laid um and our like our garden fencing in the back we really love and mm -hmm. um our we have a really nice barn that we really love we do have some some parts that are really lovely but then we also have parts like a wheelbarrow that needs to get thrown away because it doesn't have a wheel on it anymore um some just piles of branches that we've cut down and pulled out yeah 
Um, but we wanted to be very realistic and show you guys three years in what we've ab been able to accomplish, um, which I feel like is a lot. Yeah. Because when we moved here, it was nothing. Right. Yeah. We were kind of starting from scratch. Yeah. So yeah, there's a whole lot that is just laid everywhere. A whole lot of things that we tried that didn't work. Uh, things that we're trying now that hopefully do work. Um, and like the barn, for example, that we set it where we wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. um, we thought it'd be the best place for it. But all around it is not set up yet. Right. So there's things like that, that we have like the the base of things mm -hmm. but we don't have anything really complete yet yeah and that's what we're working on yeah um so while we're back there let's talk about the barn okay so the barn is in three sections um and we have the first section which is the chicken coop basically mm -hmm. um it's not huge i don't remember the actual dimensions of it eight by twelve i think eight by twelve mm -hmm. Uh, and it's got the little place where they lay the eggs. You can get it from the outside if you need to, which we never do. We do not. Um, because they, always, they don't lay there. Yeah. I don't know how to, yeah. I don't know how to fix that, but they lay on the ground. So we have mm -hmm. to go inside and grab the eggs. Which uh, is really fun when it's snake season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a snake in there that was Too not snake. a small one. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, so <laughs> we have the chicken coop. Uh, in the middle, we have the actual storage area, which, again, we have everything in there that we want to have in there, but it's a mess. Uh, we need to clean that up. We're going to build some shelves there and, and whatever, all kinds of stuff to clean it up. Yeah. Um, but, but it's there. We have a hayloft in there, which is great. Mm -hmm. It's open to the stall next to it. Right. But the hay is not in the hay stall. No, it's not. In the uh, hay loft. It's just everywhere yeah you know, so and like she said right next to that is the actual stall where we were thinking cows when, horses so when, can yeah, be in there whatever when, when we originally got our barn we did have two horses yeah. on our property um honey and angus and we love them so much but it just was not working out um they were they were just not providing for our homestead enough of what we needed to justify taking up the space on our two acres that we had. Um, but now that means that we have room for doo -doo -doo -doo, <laughs> milk cow. Yeah. Again. Again. So that is, that is one hey. thing. Hi, you have chocolate on your dress yeah. and on your face. Salinas. So nice. <laughs> I like it. So we actually, uh, we invested in a mini Jersey and we named her marmalade and we had her for uh, i want to say like a week yeah something like that uh, and then <laughs> marmalade huh it's marmalade marmalade was our cow do you remember marmalade I yeah me too i'm sad uh so w this but was you know getting a new cow. yeah <laughs> uh this was this is and one of <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know about, I don't know about the horse. Well, maybe. We'll see. But they cannot help the cow eat the grass. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, can you go play? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so we had her for probably about a week. And we were, I will say, naive. We did not know what we were getting into. Um, we were not prepared for that. Uh, that was on me, I'm going to say. I got very impatient and wanted to just do everything immediately. So that would be probably my next tip is to say, take your sweet, sweet time. So if you have like one or two things that you really want to get done per year, that is probably more than enough yeah unless it this is your yeah unless this is your full-time gig um which we like to call ourselves part-time homesteaders because um he has a full-time job and uh, we have almost five ch children now and we homeschool and um you know we home make and we like to travel and um so because of all of that this cannot be 24 7 of what we're doing uh, and so this time before we jumped in and got another cow, we made sure that we are having our fencing all done correctly and finished before a cow gets here. Uh, we're gonna add a gate onto the stall so that we can put the cow up at night, 
uh, just for her safety. We're going to extend some fencing um, so that she has uh, the availability on both sides because we have um, like pasture area on both sides of our house and a little little tiny bit in the back too um, so that she can roam and kind of keep that grass mowed down for us and give us milk you know <laughs> give us milk um, in addition to that so uh, one of the things that we are doing to really maximize that space there is that so we're putting a milk cow on it um, not sure what we're gonna do with the calf yet because I don't particularly want to calf share um, just from my own like research I don't know that that's gonna be the best thing for us but we do have a lot of chickens so we are running the chickens on the same property that we're running the cows on and what's gonna happen is those cows are going to fertilize the property and that's gonna bring bugs and then the chickens can go in and eat those bugs and they're going to scratch all of that up and that's gonna give us really great soil so that we are growing even more grass and so it is it really works itself out well um, for those two kinds of livestock to kind of be working together and so we can use that same pasture area for both of those animals and we're getting all of our dairy and we're getting uh, all of our eggs in the same spot yeah and that kind of goes back to where we set the barn yeah hopefully it really is a good idea but we set it uh far enough away from the back fence to where the animals can go behind it so they can go to either side of the pastures yes that so was very smart hopefully that you. works out yeah um yeah, that was all him. That was not my, <laughs> was not my doing at all. Uh, yeah, right now all of our fencing on our north pasture is down. Um, because, again, this is another one of those things that we did not know. When we bought this property, yeah. we had neither of us were interested in homesteading. No, at all. we had big dreams of yeah. mansion. Oh, we, we were going to put in a tennis court. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, my god. It was going to be like a mother-in-law suite. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it was a huge house that we had drawn up. Yeah, yeah. So there was fencing all around yeah. this entire property, and we were like, take it down. Yeah. We don't need that. Um, we need the room for all the yeah. cars and the Lambos and the. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we took all of that fencing down, and so now we're having to redo, redo, it. redo it all. So we did, we redid it. Mm -hmm. And then we realized after we lost our first milk cow that what we really needed to keep another cow in was going to be electric fencing. So we went to the store and we measured everything and we brought it home and um, we had all of the, all the stuff that we needed. And then once we got here, we realized that we had put every single T post in backwards. So we had, our fencing was up for the horses that we had, mm -hmm. um, but in order to run electric fencing on it, we were gonna have to pull every bit of that fencing up that we had already worked so hard <laughs> to get going. We had um, a friend that was here from California at the time when we got the horses, and as the horses are being unloaded, they were literally putting wire on t-posts to keep them in uh so even that we, we jumped on yeah <laughs> like we have definitely made a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. um which might be part of why year three this is where we're at right um but i i feel really good about where where we're we are at. now yeah sure sometimes you got to make those mistakes yeah especially i think too like you not coming from that background yeah um, and then anybody that I did have that came from that background in my family has passed away. So I didn't even have access to that. So we're really just kind of learning a lot via YouTube, yeah. um, reading blogs, and then anytime that we can find people that know what they're talking about, um, we are doing that. Yeah. And then the last thing I think that we are really focusing on doing this year is we are going to add a little mini orchard. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure um, exactly how many trees we're planting, um, but we do have a fairly decent sized space in a, a side yard that will just be perfect for that. 
uh, and then in the end that's also going to be um, you know the cow mowing everything else and it's going to be a lot easier to keep up with if everything is the maintenance if it's shaded so yeah. we're going to get um we're going to get you know the ease of the maintenance and then we're also going to get apples out of it uh, and then we'll be able to use those for cooking and freezing and making our own apple juice and um, applesauce and all of the delicious things that we'll get from that i think for people who maybe have been doing this for decades and they have you know 100 acres or whatever um, it probably doesn't seem like a lot but for people who are just kind of jumping in it's it is Jumping into it is not a good idea, so we're trying to plan things out a little bit more, putting things in a, a list of what's, what's yeah. the most important, and then go from there. Yep. Just tackle that list one by one. Um, I am sure that there are going to be plenty of times that we are asking you guys <laughs> for uh, a little help because, you know, if you have any, any expertise in gardening or tree planting... <laughs> <laughs> that's called something, but I don't remember what it's called. Ar an arborist? Oh, yeah. That's a tree person. Is that it? Okay. An arborist. Um, milk cows, chickens. Uh, we have a duck, and we really like having ducks a lot. So we we would we would welcome any feedback yeah. <laughs> at all. Um, even if you watch this video and you see you know, what we're talking about, we're planning on doing. If you say, oh, I think that that is not a great idea or I, this is how I would add on to that or do that, please, please, please tell us, not just for us, but um, there are a ton of people getting into homesteading right now and a ton of people need help. I think any wisdom that you guys can hand out is yeah. really, really helpful. Yeah, so. for sure. The whole uh, idea for me is obviously saving money yeah um so we can do other things and um not having to be reliant on anything else except yeah. for what we have you know whatever we got to do to do that that's cool with me um yeah. we're trying we're trying so like everything that we've just shown is based around that idea of we want to be self-sustained as much as possible mm -hmm. so that's yeah. what we're going for for sure okay and then the last thing that I wanted to kind of chat about how can we do this specifically with animals um, and still be able to work everything else into our lives so that this isn't everything that we're doing. Are you asking me? Yeah. Child slavery. <laughs> no. No. A little bit. <laughs> but mostly no. Um, yeah, so there are a few things that we do have to kind of keep in mind. Oh. Um, if you are like us, that you're like, I really like that idea of being self-sufficient. I like the idea of, um, you know, using whatever space I have to be able to lead that lifestyle as much as possible. But this is not what I want my entire life to look like. That'd be fine. I would happily just be at home, uh -huh. um, but I, I still really love to travel loose, so maybe not. Uh, but for us, so um, one thing that we definitely do is we plan to travel when it works out best for us with everything going on. So um, like last year we, when we went to Greece, we made sure and had somebody who was able to take care of our chickens, but they weren't really laying a ton at that time. Um, and then we had the only like garden area that we had was like a little raised bed greenhouse that we had built. And we had gotten everything out of that that we wanted to get. And then there was a ton of lettuce. And so since we have family that lives next door, they were able to come get that and make use of that. Um, when we have a milk cow, one of the things that we've discussed with um, multiple families in our area and our church is maybe doing a cow share. So a couple of days a week, a few days a week, somebody else is going to come milk our cow for us. Uh, and then they are going to get to take whatever milk they get uh, home to their families. And we have some time off of that. And then doing that will allow us to leave for longer periods of time and know that like our cow is in good hands and uh and then it will help 
the, it'll help kind of offset the feed costs and stuff too. Um, and so just making sure that um, we kind of have those things covered even before we jump into anything so that we know that even if we really, really, really love this life, it doesn't have to be our whole lives, um, I think is really beneficial because for sure, we cannot be the only, we can't be the only ones out there that want both. I would assume not. Hi, Diana. You coming up? There she is. That is our, our homestead journey where we're at right now. Uh, stay tuned because we have a lot of updates to share this year. Yep. We have a lot on our list. Um, we'll see how far we get with a new baby. Thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll see you guys next time.